Hello everyone, welcome to Cody's Car Conundrum, where you will hear about car news, car culture, and car talks. Here's your host, Cody Wagner. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the podcast. Big news, we hit a thousand downloads. Woo! Thank you, every single one of you, for downloading the podcast and getting it to be as popular as it is. Some days, there were... There was a jump by 40 downloads. 40 downloads. That's insane. And then we have a few other things that I need to get into. One, we have a PSA, or public service announcement. So the PSA is do not leave your child or a dog or any animal in a hot car in the summertime. Do not do it. Your child and or animal will suffocate because of the heat. Do not do it. If you cannot take your dog inside a, a market store or anything like that, if you're going somewhere and you cannot take your dog with you inside the store or anything, don't take the dog in your car in the first place. You may think you'll be able to get out fast enough, but something may happen and you'll be in there for an extra 30 minutes or so. Or what if you had a child left them in the car because it was totally fine to leave them in the parking lot because you're just going to go in the store for like 10 minutes. Well, guess what? It could be hot. It can't possibly be that bad to take your child into a store. It just isn't. Just get in, shop, get out. And now with that out of the way, I need to say something else. Happy Father's Day! At the time of this recording, it is actually Father's Day. So, happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there who make our lives that much better. That's not to discard the mothers, but it's not Mother's Day right now, it's Father's Day. So we're going to head straight into the news. Lewis Hamilton slams F1 simulators, says that they're glorified video games. And I could almost agree with him. I could almost agree with him because he's almost right. The only thing he's not right about is when he says that you won't necessarily learn more from the simulator. He does say that you can't sense the speed or the bumps on a track, which in a way is right. But at the same time, you can learn from it because you may, if they are simulated enough, the bumps may be there. And the speed may be more accurate. And at the very least, you can learn the circuit. So while, yes, they are just glorified video games. I mean, I have a Doctor Who sonic screwdriver. And at, the, at its very core, that's just a glorified flashlight. And so is my two lightsabers I have on my bed right now. I mean, it doesn't shine in a very specific area. But in terms of lo- illuminating the area, it's very good. So he's right and wrong. That, yes, they are just glorified video games. But no, you can actually learn a few things from it. McLaren's Hardcore 570S Sprint is almost here. Mercedes Sprinter Premium Edition joins Mercedes-Benz's UK lineup. Tesla trying to get some Model 3 reservation holders to switch to a Model S. There is a pretty big difference between the 66,000 Model S 60 and the Model 3, which can run as low as 35,000. There is a pretty big price difference. Mercedes begins production of new E-Class LWB in China, and if you don't know what that means, it means long wheelbase. Volkswagen commercial vehicle sales increase year-to-date worldwide. Wait, what? How? Maybe because those vehicles aren't equipped with the diesel gate problem. Bugatti Chiron outrageous options. Or how to spend a Lamborghini Huracan on a paint. I think from what that means is that what are the paint options on the Bugatti Chiron? Is about as much as a Huracan. Ouch. Lego made Ford GT Racer ready for Le Mans. New Mercedes GLC Coupe. Price from 49,444 euros in Germany. Kia wants a slice of the compact crossover segment. The compact SUV class is in full swing, and the Korean car manufacturer wants to take advantage of this perk, especially as it has the means to do it. Vladimir Putin's Russian state sedan, limo, and SUV look eerily British. His SUV looks like a Bentley Bentayga from the back, which is scary. Local Motors debuts autonomous IBM Watson-based Ollie bus. Jeff Gordon's next job might be hosting a talk show. Infiniti's Q50 steering suffers from a software glitch. Leads to global recall. Porsche exec says upcoming electric car won't overheat. Unlike Tesla. (laughs) Ouch. Tell you what, shots fired. (laughs) Volkswagen wants to sell 3 million electric vehicles by 2025. New Toyota Prius will have solar roof initially in Europe, Japan, and then the US. And now more on the Infiniti Q50 recall. A software glitch with the Infiniti Q50's sedan's direct adaptive steering system that can affect the car's autonomous driving cap- capabilities has led to a global recall. The safety campaign announced 
by Nissan's luxury brand it covers roughly 60,000 vehicles globally and includes 28,182 cars in the United States, 3,804 in Canada, 6,894 in China, including imported ones and locally manufactured long wheelbase versions, as Reuters reports. It's not clear yet what model year cars will have to be taken back to the dealers, but those affected may experience a glitch in the software that controls their direct adaptive steering system, which is a key component to its autonomous driving capabilities that allows the Q50 to drive itself on highways under certain conditions. The issue can lead to a lack of steering responsiveness and change in turning radius, and could kick in in certain rare circumstances just after starting the vehicle, said Stefan Weinman. Infinity spokesman. Owners of the affected sedans will be informed by the automaker in June and July, and the necessary repairs will be made free of charge. At the time of writing, Infinity had yet to announce a full recall schedule or additional data on the topic. This is actually the second safety recall campaign surrounding the Q50's adaptive steering system, as the Japanese brand previously recalled the 2014 model year vehicles after discovering that the electric steering system could be disabled at freezing temperatures. Barnado appears to be a fitting name for Bentley's future sports car. It's B-A-R-N-A-T-O. I'm going to pronounce it Bernardo. KTM Crossbow coming to the U.S. next year. Faced with the Peugeot 2008 arrives in the U.K. from 13,615 pounds or about 17 grand in the U.S. Well, 17 grand in U.S. dollars as, it's, as Peugeot is not even here. Ford GT asserts itself by taking pole at Le Mans 24 hours race. 2016 Mazda CX-3 NAB's IIHS Top Safety Award. Porsche Exclusive's 911 Carrera S Endurance Racing Edition has been revealed. Fiat Fullback Pickup on sale in the UK from £20,995, or about 23 to 24 grand in US dollars. Jeep and Harley-Davidson spawn a Revenge Custom Renegade. BMW 3 Series to be built at state-of-the-art Mexico plant. Mercedes official says jacked up E-Class estate is not too far out, which means the rest of us purists are going to cry and weep for hours. Aston Martin and Red Bull hypercar revealed to potential customers. 2017 Nissan GTR coming to the UK next week. RZ special joins Toyota Camry's Australian lineup. Le Mans Audi R8 safety car has a big moment during rainy practice. Land Rover's Discovery Sport pulls a 100-ton train. Singer to bring latest new Castle 911 to Goodwood. Damaged child restraint anchor bars lead to BMW X3 and X4 recall. Added to host 24 online endurance rates on Forza Motorsport 6. 2018 Alfa Romeo Stelvio SUV tackles the roads near the Nürburgring. Tesla Model X deliveries to kick off in Europe this month. Alpina B7 to make UK premiere at Goodwood will start from a price of £115,000. Or about one hundred and 25 to 130 grand in US dollars, which is byword for ridiculous. Chris Harris returns with new web series under the Top Gear roof. And now, more news on the damaged child restraint anchor bars. Nearly 190,000 units of the BMW X3 and X4 crossovers have been subjected to a recall issued by BMW North America. The vehicles have potentially faulty lower anchor bars used for securing child restraint seats which, according to the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, or NHTSA, may become damaged when using the European Isofix-type connector. The damaged parts may increase the child's risk of an injury in the case of a crash. Certain 2011-2014 X3 S-Drive 28i, X-Drive 28i, and X-Drive 35i, manufactured between July 2, 2010, and April 14, 2016, along with the 2015 to 2017 X3 X Drive 28D assembled from March to, from March 10th 2014 to March 31st 2016 are affected by this condition. These are joined by the 2015 to 2017 X4 X Drive 28i, X Drive 35i and X Drive M40i assembled from March 3rd, 2014 to April 15th, 2016. The total number of compact crossovers that will have to be driven back to the dealership rises to 188,670 cars. Owners will be notified on the condition, and the manufacturer will, wield, will weld a reinforcing bracket to the lower anchor bars and the vehicle body at no cost. The recall should begin on July 12th, but until then, concerned owners can contact the automaker's customer service line at one 800 
1-800-525-7417 or NHTSA's Vehicle Safety Hotline at 1-888-327-4236. I will see you after a word from our sponsors. We've all seen them. Those self-centered drivers who think their cars are more important than everyone else's. They take up two or more parking spaces. Now you can let them know how you really feel with sarcastic parking cars. Go to www how I really feel cars.com. You'll receive 12 different cards expressing what you think about their parking. These cards come in their own carrying case. Once again, go to www.how I really feel cars.com and get your cards today. Hello, everyone. I am back, and now we're going to get straight into how Audi are going to host a 24 hour race on Forza 6. Video games have evolved to the point that participating in an organized tournament or sessions requires much more than skill. In today's day and age, gamers can sometimes be considered genuine sports people. Maybe some will deem the statement a little stretch, but this weekend, Audi of America will host the first 24-hour online endurance race on Forza Motorsport 6 using social platform Twitch. Yep, that means 12 teams of professional gamers and Audi fans will compete in a 24-hour race, while the real Audi Sport team battle for a 14th overall victory at the 24-hour endurance race in France. We're talking about the legendary 24 hours of the Le Mans race, one of the most prestigious, oldest active endurance events held annually since 1923 at Circuit de la Sarthe. The gamers will race LMP1 vehicles that are near replicas of the real race cars, and to further pay tribute to the real endurance race as it unfolds on the iconic French road course, the participants will wear full racing suits and helmets, drive the same demanding shifts, and experience similar in-game weather as the real life conditions. I am thrilled to be a part of the 24 hour online race on Forza Motorsport 6. Le Mans is the pinnacle event on Audi's endurance racing calendar this year, and if I can't be on the track this weekend, this is the next best thing. You will be able to watch the challenge unfold by accessing this link, but it will be hard to concentrate on the real deal and the gaming tribute at the same time. 2017 Chevrolet Cruze Hatchback, priced on $22,190. Mopar launches limited edition 16 Ram Rebel, priced from $52,460. It's also known as the Mopar 16 Rebel. Bentley lineup for Goodwood announced includes three UK debuts. 2017 Jeep Compass and Patriot Boat Placements Interior ex Exposed. That new Lamborghini concept lands in North America. All-electric Audi Q5 to be produced in Mexico? Maybe. Mini Vision X100 offers a glimpse into future and connected autonomous future. Rolls Royce reveals futuristic 103EX to celebrate BMW's 100th birthday. Aston Martin Ready's DB11 for Goodwood Dynamic debut. Mercedes Benz to implement wireless charging by 2017. Dubai Police Stop Street Racers sees 81 of their cars. Aston Martin GT8 is an old school attack on the senses. First look at Volvo's all-new 2018 XC60 SUV. Volkswagen might sell Ducati. In the wake of the emissions cheating scandal, Volkswagen is faced with a few decisions regarding its future structure and focus. New Mercedes GLC Coupe spotted in traffic. Riverside Museum auctioning off 49 supercars, classics, and indie racers. Mansory and Mercedes AMG G63 6x6 goes up in flames after bumping into a Hyundai. And it doesn't look pretty. Jaguar Land Rover opens new factory in Brazil. Ford Flathead V8 rebuild time lapse is beautiful. Though I didn't watch the video. <laughs> Project Con gets to work on new Land Rover Discovery Sport. Harley Davidson commits to electric motorcycle within five years. Jeep Cherokee Overland goes on sale in the UK and it starts from 38,745 pounds or about 40 grand. Mazda to reveal new MX-5 Icon Edition at Goodwood. Honda updates 2017 Accord Hybrid, priced from $29,605. Speedart SP390M is the name this McCann goes by. London's black cabs could make their way into other European capitals. LEGO celebrates original Beetle with new scale model. Williams Chief thinks there's parity between F1's big teams. Germany looking to go emissions free by 2030. Mazanti Avantra something looks fast and furious in real life images. Mini reveals new hardcore JCW Challenge, which is a really hardcore Mini Cooper. New Mercedes Benz AMG GTRTs. And no, that's not from Nissan, but from Mercedes AMG. 
USA is 2017 Fiat and a Barth 124 Spider analyzed in 100 photos. Australia's new Toyota Corolla Hybrid has a driving range of over 1,000 kilometers. And no, I cannot translate that into miles. 17 million worth of cars were gathered for a single scene in Fast and Furious 8. Ktrum 7 620R to show its skills up the Goodwood Hill Climb. Will Nissan's new SOFC powertrains revolutionize the industry? PSA to ease range anxiety with next-gen batteries and chargers. Cadillac CT6 adds industry's first surround view video recording system. World's first Shelby GT350 with suspension gets low in Florida. Lewis Hamilton ranks as 11th highest paid athlete in the world. IIHS finds 2017 Ford Fusion significantly improved on the safety front. Kia's GT rear-drive four-door coupe coming fast our way. Slow Porsche McCann causes BMW M3 driver to mess up on the ring. 2018 Audi A8 nailed in more ways than one. Barola launches multiple new exhaust systems for 2016 Camaro SS model. MGGS goes on sale in the UK starting from £14,995 or about 19 grand in US dollars. Nikola Motor claims 2.3 billion in pre-orders for electric truck. Honda Civic Type R sets lap records at five European circuits. That pretty much makes it the ACR of the hot hatches. Though to be fair, we haven't seen what the Ford Focus RS can do. Aftermarket Toyota seat heaters could short circuit and spark flames. Volvo XC90 T8 pumped by Polestar to 421 horsepower. The 2017 Honda Ridgeline can take big blocks like the domestic trucks as well. Porsche ends Muhammad Ali campaign as a sign of respect. A McLaren 675 LT Spider fed on hay at Goodwood. In other words, that means it had a bit of an accident. New Mercedes straight six engine to feature 48 volt hybrid tech as standard, or 48V if that's not if that's not what the V means. Lamborghini Aventador Roadster joins Drake's supercar collection. I can hear you weeping all the way from here. First trailer of the Forza Horizon 3 just looks amazing. That's right, Forza Horizon 3 is coming, I believe, this September or November. Woo! -hoo! Next Audi SQ5 to offer 365 horsepower thanks to electric turbo tech. <laughs> Jaguar prices new F Pace SUV from $40,990. The world's most expensive tires will cost you $600,000. <laughs> that makes me cry. Maserati Levante to tackle Goodwood Hill Climb. Tesla Model X price from 74,480 pounds in the UK. Or 90 grand in US dollars. Also, the configurator for it is now live. Lamborghini Aventador burns to a crisp in London. Xenos E10R to take on Goodwood's Hill Climb. Verstappen vs. Rosberg Canadian GP fight reflects Renault unit progress. Vol teases 05RR ahead of Goodwood reveal. 2017 BMW i3 goes on sale from $44,495 with extra battery juice and more standard goodies. And if you want to know what that is in pounds, that's, that's near enough about 38,000 pounds. Lamborghini opens its renovated museum to the public. Pennzoil took a Wrangler out in the desert and had its way with it. 2017 GMC Acadia will remind you if someone's sitting in the back seat. McLaren will bring its most hardcore supercars to Goodwood. Maserati Quattroporta gets a minor stylish up. Mercedes GLCF cell hydrogen prototype unveiled. Production version due in 2017. South Korea accuses Volkswagen of manipulating emissions and noise level tests. Like they weren't being accused enough. Smart to launch new electric drive models in Paris. Renault Clio facelift adds new engine and colors. Russian traffic accident leads to a genuine street fight. Meet the all new Barricade from Transformers The Last Night. Another Michael Bay film with tons and tons of explosions and no actual storyline to be seen of. 2017 Subaru BRZ Series Yellow get performance parts and no power hike. You'll have to take a trip to Monterey to purchase this Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport. Analysts say annual autonomous car sales will hit 21 million by 2035. And now, a word from our sponsors. We've all seen them. Those self-centered drivers who think their cars are more important than everyone else's. They take up two or more parking spaces. Now you can let them know how you really feel with sarcastic parking cars. Go to www.howireallyfeelcars.com. You'll receive 12 different cars expressing what you think about their parking. 
These cards come in their own carrying case. Once again, go to www.howireallyfeelcards.com and get your cards today. Welcome back. Now, I went to a three-day event, and within that three-day event, I got my feet really sore, and it really hurt because I was wearing really flat shoes, and I had no Dr. Scholl's in my shoes either. I know, bad on my part. Hey, I was there too. Wait, no you weren't. No, what are you doing? This is my podcast. Nope, I'm taking over officially as of right now. No! That's right. As of today, not only am I taking over your podcast, I am a special guest. You're my sister, so you're just my guest. You're not that special. Of course I am. You're just I'm, a guest. No, no, I'm special because I'm your twin sister. You're still a guest. How dare you. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, we did a three-day event. For two of those days, we had our own booths at the youth booth area, which was really tiny. And I almost overpacked. So yeah, that was a thing. And it was our first time having our own booths. Because usually, we work our mom and dad's booths. But this time, it was going to be our turn. Yeah, and as I said, very, very small table. So it was, it wasn't like it was easy setting up the table. Then, everyone else had tablecloths, but we didn't. Because we weren't informed, we had to bring our own tablecloths. But despite all the misinformation and some, despite the minor challenges, it was very fun. We also had to get new clothes, which took about two days because Eric had to get her Jess. Jess. <laughs> Which took about two days because Erica had to get her dress fixed because it was slightly too big around the edges. And also I got two shirts, which were salmon and blue. We had to stop him from eating his salmon colored shirt, by the way. Did not. You had to stop him from eating the burgers that the guy had in his hand. Oh, by the way, Cody forgot to mention that this wasn't just any ordinary event. It was a homeschooler event. <gasps> that makes so much difference. It actually does. Even with that sarcasm, it really does make a difference. And there was actually quite a few people there. Not as much as I was expecting, because the advertising hyped it up more than it was actually worthy of hype. No, 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 no. There were lots of people in the main hall, because apparently the youth vendors were, post were supposed to be with the adult vendors. But because of recent events, people were throwing balls, and by people, I mean children, small children were throwing balls, and... They said it was just a lot of chaos and mess. So they decided to move us youth vendors into this small room. Well, you wouldn't know where we were because they had Hall K, Hall J, Hall H, blah, 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 blah. So it wasn't advertised that well that we were in that room. Not to mention you had to walk a few doors down to find the room we were in. And even still, the sign was small saying, Youth vendors. So the rest of the whole room was fine, but we didn't get a lot of customers. We only sold one thing. I had my own booth and so did Cody. So he sold one thing, I sold one thing. But, you know, there wasn't a lot of traffic in there. Other people did well, but that's because they had a lot of physical products. You know, swords, guns, art, jewelry. We had CDs and DVDs, that sort of thing. So maybe that's, maybe that's why we didn't get too much. People were like, oh, I don't know what that is, but I'm too afraid to ask. Because we had people who would look, and you could just tell they had questions. But when you asked, they said, oh, no, I don't have any questions. But you knew they did. So it was a fun experience. It could, it could have been better, but hey, they can't all be winners, especially if you're the first one. So essentially... All of the youth vendors were, were told to go sit in the corner and watch how everyone else would be busy. That's, what, <laughs> that's essentially what happened. So, yeah. A little bit of crying, a little bit of Not really. <laughs> and the funny thing was, or should I say the interesting thing was, moving the youth vendors to the other room didn't stop the problem of people throwing balls and misbehaving. So, maybe next year will be better. So sitting in the corner didn't help at all. It was still just as lonely as ever. Now, now, let's stop talking bad about the event. <laughs> it was good. It was fun. We got to meet other like-minded people. Let me tell you what was very interesting and surprising to me. The community! Yes, it was about the community. Because has someone ever asked you a question and the first thought that pops into your mind is, Oh, I'm very suspicious of you now. I don't trust you as much, probably. But what happened was, other youth vendors would ask us, So how's business going? You know, how's your booth doing? And... That thought didn't pop into my mind. I felt like I could trust them enough to tell them that, you know, 
it's going a little slow, or it's doing great, I got a sale, or something like that. It was just great, and you know why? Because they're homeschoolers. Now, I'm not saying that non-homeschoolers are bad, but to the events we've been to, those kids aren't like that. Boo! So the homeschoolers was cool. They were very concerned about your own business and how things were going, and it was very nice. I enjoyed that. In short, they actually cared about you. <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention. There's about four different districts in the Merchandise Mart. I think there's more than four. There's like several. Yeah. It was crazy. I mean, we didn't go to all those districts. <laughs> but just seeing it from the highway was like, yeah, if there was a lost and found, it, that wouldn't make any difference anyway. It, it, would, it would take something like a SWAT team to find someone and a kid who was lost. Oh, what do you know? The lost and found is lost. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Now, the thing was, even though this building was very big, we were only in a certain part of the building. They actually had like a movie theater, actually, I think. They do? I think so. They were playing on the last day, or I think Friday, they were playing two movies. Oh, so is that why there was that big screen behind the, uh, where the guy was teaching the class? No, there was like a different part of the building that we weren't oh. even in, that we didn't even walk around. Oh, well we probably couldn't have walked around there anyways, that would be too far from the exhibit. Oh yeah, by the way, we had to walk around with our badges on, which is quite interesting. Yeah, but thankfully no one stopped us and said, hey, what do you do? Where, where are you? Or anything like that. Like, you need to come with us, you don't have a badge on. Come with me and I'll show you what I do. <laughs> <laughs> totally not creepy at all. <laughs> but there were so many, oh my gosh, I remember... That Cody was talking about this. There were so many books there. I was actually irritated the first day we got there. Because books aren't bad and all. But there were five exhibits. Just straight on books. And I was like, not one of you have any creativity whatsoever. You couldn't have thought, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll have like a lemonade stand or, or something like that. That wouldn't just, that would be different from what everyone else was doing. But the thing was, that this is a homeschool event. So a lot of... Parents who homeschool their children are coming to get a lot of curriculum. Help me. Curriculum. Curriculum. There we go. <laughs> so, you know, the math books or general reading material. Not to mention there were some college people there, some healthcare stuff. Debate club. There was that too. And I think, oh yeah, Dell was there. Actually, there might have been a sponsor. I'm not 100% sure. I think mom said they were a sponsor. They were a sponsor? I think they Why were. Why are they all the way in the back then? No, if you're going to sponsor an event, you'd think they'd want the sponsor to be all the way at the front. No, 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 but this is Dell, so I'm not I'm not even sure. Dell, nothing. It should be at the front. <laughs> That's like saying, oh, yeah, you can sponsor us. Just make sure you do all your work in the bathroom so where no one can see you. No, 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 I don't know. I'm not 100% sure if they were sponsors, but I'm just saying, I think Mom said they were a sponsor. Wow, way to, way to get put at the end of the room. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, it was still in the main hall, so... And everyone would have gone to the back anyway, so it would never really mattered. Oh my gosh, I forgot about one thing! You forgot so many things, oh my goodness! The chili was so good! By the way, RIP headphone users. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Oh gosh, it was so good, though. It was just better than the one at Wendy's. Or Texas Roadhouse. It was just so delicious. It was... Ah. Wow. Ah. Ah. I can't do it. <laughs> Thank you. There we go. That That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> it was called Texas Chili, and apparently, and I tried it too, I actually had my own bowl. They had Texas Chili at the event. We've never had chili before, and that was really good, I have to admit. And also, no, it didn't have hunks of steak in it, if any of you were wondering. There was no steak in the chili. It I, was just regular chili, despite the name. I mean, it had meat in there, but it wasn't like big chunks or anything. It wasn't steak. It's not Texas <laughs> chili because there's no steak in there. <laughs> Another thing that was a first for me and Cody, I see we got a little sidetracked there, was talking about food and the room and everything, is that even though we do work our mom and dad's booth, we don't do most of the talking. But we're really antisocial. Yes, we are. And when we had our own booths, no one was there to save you if you were stuck or you couldn't remember what you were saying. So... It was do or die. <laughs> no. Ride or die. No one was going to die. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone was safe. You just had a potential loss of losing customers. But other than that, it was, it was fine. Go big or go home. It, exactly. And the first time, when we first started talking to people, we had like those one-liner sentences about what it was. 
So instead of informing you what it was, we'd say, these three are CDs, this is a DVD, this is my shirt, and I do a podcast. That'd be it. We didn't go into, this is blah, 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 blah. This is blah, 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 four, blah, 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 blah. You know, that sort of thing. <laughs> so, but as we kept going, it got better. So, I think we're a little less social now when it comes to talking publicly. Woo! Better friendship, no. <laughs> <laughs> we did probably make some friends, though. We have some contact information, so that's cool. I'm pretty sure you're the only one with contact information. The only thing I got was cards. I got cards, too. Business... <laughs> I'm crying. <laughs> Business cards are important, though, so you can connect with people, maybe do some collaborations. I almost said collab. Yeah, that's it. Collaborations. Yeah, but... You said collaborations. No, co- I almost said collab. Oh. There's not a difference, by the way. <laughs> Anyway, I hope you enjoy this funny end bit and hopefully this fairly funny podcast, and I'll see you next wait, time. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, I have one thing to say. What? Thank you for having me on your podcast, even though I kind of just barged in here and took a seat and started talking. At least you didn't make me cry, so that, that's fair. <laughs> anyway, see you later, guys. Bye! You've just listened to Cody's Car Conundrum. Be sure to join us every Sunday. You can subscribe to Cody's YouTube channel at www.youtube.com slash c slash viper for life acr be sure to get cody's books on amazon at www.amazon.com slash cody dash wagner slash e slash capital b zero one nine capital k capital x seven two capital z eight if you have any questions or would like to become a sponsor, send an email to drtaffy777 at gmail.com and put sponsor in the subject line. Be sure to follow Cody here so you don't miss any episodes. Bye, until next time.